Boyd Bushman has recently created a wave of controversy within the UFO alien conspiracy community here on the internet since a video recently surfaced of the late Skunk Works engineer making what appears to be a deathbed confession about top secret government contact and cooperation with extraterrestrials. The story has been picked up by several large news agencies and now has millions of people across the world in shock and awe as they wonder if this could be the start of a full-scale government disclosure that aliens are real and are actively visiting our planet. However, this is very definitely not the first time that Boyd has spoken publicly about such subjects. In 1999, he appeared on the Discovery Channel program Billion Dollar Secret, and in 2003, he did an interview with David Serrata. In both of these interviews, he spoke openly about things like anti-gravity technology and the existence of a large-scale government cover-up of aliens and the UFO phenomena. It's also not the first time that the same exact alleged photograph of a real alien being has been shown to the public either, which is funny because so many people I talk to think that this is some kind of new, grand, authentic deathbed confession and another step closer to disclosure. What they probably don't know is that this is a photo of a toy alien and it's been around for at least six years since John Hutchison posted a video of it on his YouTube channel back in 2008, saying it came from a high-level inside source in the aerospace industry, who he couldn't name. Well, guess what? That source was Boyd Bushman. And a few weeks after John Hutchison posted that video claiming it was a picture of a real alien, another guy named John from Mars posted a video of an alien doll that he says he bought at Kmart a few years back, which looks exactly like the alien in the Boyd Bushman photographs. That was back in 2009. We found ample evidence that it was a toy alien long before anyone ever took pictures of it and began telling people that it was a real alien. But five years later, everyone forgets about it, and then the story goes viral thanks to some mainstream press coverage, and ta-da, next thing you know, a bunch of complete morons are once again praising it as the holy grail of alien disclosure proof and calling anyone who disagrees with them a shill. Despite the fact that there are now many people posting videos of this toy alien doll saying they've owned one for years, and despite the fact that these incredibly blurry photographs were already debunked six years ago, there are actually people out there trying to claim that the photos are genuine and that the government is covering it up by conspiring with Kmart or possibly the toy company or the toy manufacturer. None of these people can seem to give a clear and coherent account of how this fraud was actually perpetrated, but they are positive that somehow the government helped to make an alien doll that closely resembles the real alien in the photograph in order to cover it all up. Well, regardless of what some people want to think, I find it incredibly hard to believe that Boyd's source for this information somehow smuggled a camera into Area 51, took pictures of this alien, and then smuggled the photographs back out of Area 51, and provided them to Bushman without the detection of any of the security services who work there and is their job to monitor and make sure that kind of stuff doesn't happen. So whoever provided Boyd Bushman with all that alleged photographic evidence of UFOs, anti-gravity craft, and alien beings inside of Area 51, obviously used pictures of an alien doll, much like the ones sold by Kmart. So what does that say about the credibility and validity of the rest of those photographs? It's just a shame that Boyd passed away on August 7, 2014, and can no longer tell us who his source was for these fraudulent photographs. Was it just some alien conspiracy nut turned hoaxer? Or was it a government disinformation agent trying to discredit Boyd and dissuade any other insiders who might think of following in his footsteps? I definitely don't think that Boyd Bushman had any ill intentions himself when he recorded this final interview. That is, I don't think that he knew the information he was putting out there was bogus. I just think he was a little too heavy into the alien and UFO conspiracy world for perhaps a bit too long and had a lot of bad information fed to him over the years through sources that he thought he could trust. I definitely think that Boyd firmly believed that he was making a genuine disclosure of legitimate information in all his interviews, part of what makes it all sound so convincing. However, just because his photographs of aliens are fake doesn't mean all his other information is likewise fraudulent. He could have been fed disinformation and fake photographs toward the end of his career in an attempt to discredit him and distract from the other things that he talked about. And Boyd talked about quite a lot of things over the years. Boyd also kept reminding us of the importance of data over theory. So in addressing the remainder of evidence in the Boyd Bushman case, I'm going to focus primarily on data and stay away from claims where there is no readily available data. 
For example, when Boyd claims that the creatures are inhabitants of a planet called Quintumnia and is located 68 light years away from Earth, yet it takes them only 45 minutes to travel to our planet, and at home they communicate through telepathy, I'm not going to bother talking about that kind of stuff or trying to debunk or disprove it either way because there is no hard data there. Maybe if he had told us the exact star cluster where Quintumnia was located, then we could have something to point our telescopes at. But unfortunately, he gives us no hard data or sources to support these claims. So let's instead look at the claims where data and sources are provided. In all his major interview appearances, Boyd claims that if you take two magnets and lock them together with opposing magnetic poles, anti-aligned, that the opposing magnetic forces affects the object's gravity such that the object will fall slower than if the poles were aligned. This is a readily testable claim. In his 2003 interview with David Serrata, Bushman even provides paperwork of 500 drop test experiments conducted from a height of 59 feet at a location in White Settlement, Texas on December 12, 1995. The document is not very clear in the video, but the words anti-gravity are visible in the top left corner next to the words at LMTAS, aka Lockheed Martin Tactical Aircraft Systems, where Boyd claims the experiments were conducted. Since real science isn't concerned with the details or results of these tests by Lockheed Martin and only cares whether these results can be independently replicated every time or not, I'd like to encourage everyone out there to try this experiment themselves and post their own results and data. I will be conducting and posting videos of my own replication of this experiment shortly. In 2009, Bill Alec conducted a magnetic drop experiment where he claimed to have positively replicated Boyd's findings, although he received criticism for conducting only one test and releasing the objects by hand rather than with a trapdoor mechanism. All in all, I agree that much more thorough testing needs to be done to eliminate all sources of error from the experiment and make sure that no one's fooling themselves. Does it work or doesn't it? In addition, future experiments should try to measure the magnitude of opposing magnetic forces within the object and compare that to the reduction in the natural acceleration of gravity to find a relation between the two and thereby allow us to figure out the forces required to negate gravity altogether, if indeed this even works at all. Boyd Bushman also endorses John Hutchison's claims of anti-gravity, claiming that the effects are derived from high-voltage electrostatics in one interview. Since real scientists aren't persuaded by such claims until they can be reproduced independently and repeatedly under a prescribed set of conditions, I have always been skeptical of John Hutchison and his inability to provide accurate explanations of how he conducted his experiments. As far as I know, no one has ever been able to independently reproduce these effects. While I have seen firsthand the effects of high voltage electrostatics on lightweight objects such as lifters, and done some of my own research into the Biefeld-Brown effect and some of the top secret research that has been done related to this very real phenomenon. I have not seen evidence that the effect is strong enough to lift heavy steel cannonballs like the object shown in the Hutchison video. In my opinion, this effect can be much more easily generated by affixing a camera to a box with a cannonball inside of it and then dropping the box down an elevator shaft so it gives the appearance of the ball becoming weightless inside. The same would also work quite effectively for the milkshake ice cream as well, giving the illusion of anti-gravity while the object is in freefall. In the past, I have exposed some of the serious problems with John Hutchison's various scientific claims, his lack of technical knowledge and explanations, as well as the complete inability of anyone else besides him to replicate any of his experiments in a controlled scientific setting. Until precise data and information is provided on how exactly to replicate these effects, and until those replications are successfully conducted, I will have to conclude that this is just another hoax that Boyd Bushman fell for hook, line, and sinker, kind of like that fake Kmart alien. In Boyd's 2003 interview with David Serrata, he also endorses the story of Bob Lazar as a legitimate source for information regarding Area 51 and anti-gravity technology, claiming that the Bob Lazar tapes are as far as I can talk. Bob Lazar came out in the late 1980s claiming that he was a PhD physicist hired to reverse engineer extraterrestrial vehicles for Los Alamos Laboratories and Area 51. Bob Lazar claimed that the craft's anti-gravity propulsion mechanism used a stable isotope of element 115 that has anti-gravity and transmutation properties. 
It's been 25 years since Bob first made those claims, and extensive high-energy particle physics research has since created Element 115 and beyond in the laboratory, and found absolutely no evidence of a stable isotope with a half-life longer than a few hundred milliseconds. So, it's pretty much debunked. In 1993, the Los Angeles Times looked into Bob Lazar and found no evidence that Lazar ever attended MIT or Caltech, as he had claimed. Bob tried to claim that the government deleted all his records when he entered the black world of top-secret programs, but when asked to provide the names of his professors from Caltech or MIT, Bob could only name one of his professors. He said the professor was from Caltech, but it turns out the name he gave was actually one of his professors at Pierce Junior College in Los Angeles, where Stanton Friedman later found that Lazar took a few electronics courses in the late 1970s. Shortly after that, Bob Lazar stopped giving interviews. The only documented evidence for Bob Lazar's claims to have worked for the U.S. military or Area 51 are a W-2 form and a picture of his ID badge. Both documents were produced at a time when Bob Lazar had listed his occupation on court documents as a photo processor. In the days before Photoshop, those were the kinds of skills you needed to forge documents. And there are lots of reasons to believe that both these documents were forged. At the time Bob Lazar claims to have worked for Area 51, their security was provided by a private contractor called EG&G. Therefore, Bob's security badge should have been an EG&G badge and not one issued by the U.S. Department of Naval Intelligence. The United States Department of Naval Intelligence, if you look it up, has not formally existed since World War II and has since been known as the Office of Naval Intelligence. Oddly enough, Bob's W-2 was issued by the same now-defunct Department of the Navy. Oops. I could talk about Bob Lazar for hours, but I think the lack of evidence for his Element 115 claims trumps just about anything else that I could really say about the man and his many lies over the years. As always, more detailed information is available on my website, links in the description below. In conclusion, I'd say the case presented by Boyd Bushman in this supposed deathbed confession is flimsy at best, and it's evident to me at least that Boyd's sources were individuals within the UFO alien conspiracy community and not actual aerospace employees, high-ranking scientists, or other insiders from Area 51 or the Lockheed Skunk Works. Whoever provided Boyd Bushman with alleged photographic evidence of UFOs, anti-gravity craft, and alien beings inside of Area 51 obviously used pictures of an alien doll, thereby drawing into question the validity of all the other photographs provided to Boyd Bushman through that same source of information. And many of Boyd's other sources of information have likewise proved untrustworthy. Rumors about aliens working inside Area 51 have been common since the early days after World War II when military intelligence, or counterintelligence, began spreading UFO and alien stories to confuse and discredit locals who had accidentally witnessed the test flights of experimental top-secret aircraft being built, flown, and tested at Area 51. The rumors proved effective at distracting the public and distorting any information they might provide to foreign intelligence agencies or other members of the public. In my opinion, this latest Boyd Bushman drama has done quite well in tainting the public's susceptibility to future disclosures by other scientists, engineers, and whistleblowers. It's also done wonders in the mainstream press to taint the credibility and perceived sanity of all truth seekers, or as the media prefers to call us, conspiracy theorists. Anyways, thanks for watching. Any other claims, data, or information that I may have missed or that you'd like me to address, please leave a comment below or contact me through my Alien Scientist Facebook page. Thanks again.